welcome uh, to our class today and uh, today we are going to be able to uh, discuss about uh, project investment techniques and uh, when we talk about uh, project investment techniques there are going to be those techniques that are going to enable finance managers or any, any other kind of particular manager to be able to make a decision whether to invest in a particular project or not. And when we talk about uh, a project investment techniques, uh, they are broadly classified into the first one is going to be non-discounting techniques, and uh, the second one is going to be discounting techniques. When we talk about the non-discounting techniques, which we are going to discuss today, non-discounting techniques are those techniques that usually do not take into consideration the concept of time value for money. And when we talk about the concept of time value for money, it means that a shilling of today is not a shilling of tomorrow. Uh, a good example is that um, if uh, we compare the value of 1,000 shillings in the year uh, 2000 and the value of the same 1,000 shillings in the year 2023, the one of the year 2000 will be able to purchase several commodities as compared to the same 1,000 shillings in the year 2023 uh, because a shilling usually depreciates a lot over the years. So now the non-discounting techniques we have said there are going to be those techniques that are not going to take into consideration the concept of time value for money which states that a shilling of today is not a shilling of tomorrow. So one, uh, uh, the, the first technique under the non-discounting techniques that we are going to be able to have a discussion on is going to be the payback period. And when we talk about uh, the payback period, the payback period usually refers uh, to the amount of time it is going to take to recover the initial investment that you have actually invested in a particular project. For example, if you have invested one million you have invested that kind of particular one million. It may be a sublento houses. How many years will it take you to be able to recover that one million? How long is it going to take you to recover that amount of one million? So when are you going to be paid back from that kind of particular project? So that's why they call it payback period. When will the project pay you back? How long will it be able to take? So it is going to, uh, to refer the amount of time that it is going to take to recover the initial investment that you have invested in a particular kind of particular project. It may be you invest 1,000, I mean 100,000, by buying a motor, a motorbike that you can actually be able to use in, uh, for border border. How long will it take for you to recover that initial investment which is 100,000? How long will the project take to pay you back? That's why they call it the payback period. So it is going to refer to that amount of time that it takes to recover the initial investment that you have invested in a particular uh, project. So now, uh, in this kind of particular payback period, we are going to do a simple calculation that is going to uh, be of importance, especially under the NEC exam. And uh, this kind of particular calculation is uh, the one that uh, you can be able to see here, uh, which says that uh, consider a project, consider a project whose initial, so consider a project whose, so let me delete this one, so consider a project whose initial investment is 200,000. So the initial investment of this project is 200,000. And then uh, the project is expected to generate the following cash flows. So the first cash flow in year one, is 100,000, year two, 50,000, year three, 50,000 again, and then year four, uh, 30,000. Uh, and then uh, the question is going to ask us here uh, to be able to calculate. So the question is going to say, you calculate the payback period. The payback period. So we want to be able to see how can we be able to calculate the payback period from this kind of particular uh, cash flows. 
So when uh, you have been asked about um, the payback period, the only thing that you are going to be able to add, the column that you are going to add here, is going to be the column of accumulated cash flows. Accumulated uh, cash flows. So we add the column of accumulated cash flows in order to be able to calculate that payback period. So in this accumulated cash flows, what you are going to be able to uh, do, the first uh, cash flow that you have been given here, in the first year, which is actually 100,000, is the one that you are going to transfer under that column that you have created, which is the column of uh, accumulated cash flow. So the first cash flow in the first year, whichever the amount is going to be, you're going to be able to uh, transfer it in the column of that accumulated uh, cash flows. And then uh, you are going to uh, take this accumulated cash flow and divide it uh, to the next uh, cash flow of the next period, uh, which is going to be the 100,000 uh, plus the 50,000, which is going to give you 150,000. And then uh, you are going to take the 150,000 plus the next cash flow of uh, uh, the third year, which is 50,000, which is going to give you a 200,000, which is going to give you that 200,000. And then uh, you are going to take uh, the 200,000 here, you add the 30,000, which is going to give you 230,000. So now you have the accumulated uh, cash flows. You have the accumulated cash flows there. And uh, you are going to compare with the initial, the initial investment. And remember, the initial investment in this case, you can be able to see the initial investment is 200,000. And then you uh, check again at that kind of particular accumulated cash flows uh, to be able to see when are you likely to be able to recover uh, that kind of particular initial investment. And you can be able to see that the 200,000 is in the third year. So that third year is your payback period. You are going to say payback uh, period equals to year three is equals to year three and that's how you are going to be able to calculate the payback uh, period whereby you compare that initial investment and you check in the accumulated cash flow so when are you likely to recover your initial investment and you can be able to see that uh, your initial investment is 200,000 which is showing which is actually in the third year and uh, that payback period is going to be year three so in the next video, I'm going to be able uh, to show you a situation whereby that kind of particular, uh, the initial investment, you cannot be able to actually see it under the accumulated cash flows. So I'm going to give you another example that is going to be able to uh, illustrate that one. So now, uh, for any guidance on finance, you can uh, reach me using this number, 0718 585810 as business finance uh, for any kind of particular discussion that you may want us to be able to uh, discuss. Maybe if you have a question, you can be able to reach me through that kind of particular number. So now, uh, for now, we uh, call it uh, a class. So thank you.